Hey everybody, Becca's on jury duty, so that means it's Ivan time. <laughs> now today we're gonna be slaying minions and searching for shrines. That's right, it's Valor and Villainy from Skybound Games. Now this one versus many fantasy fray pits one evil villain versus one to five heroes. Now these two teams will duke it out over six rounds in which the heroes will try to locate three shrines that are hidden on the game map before the villain can obtain too much power and defeat them in a final battle. Setup begins with one player choosing to play Mardak, the villain of the game. The rest will each take a hero character sheet and the card from a hero team known as the Order Without Borders. Now character sheets contain character name and their special abilities, a health tracker on the left side, power stats, and an action track. The characters will place a health token on their top health slot, a plus one token on their star power stat, and an action token on the leftmost spot of their action track. The villain will place their health token on the health slot according to the number of heroes. Give the initiative token to the hero player at the left of the villain. Next. Set up the game board by separating shuffling map tiles divided by their tiers, one, two, and three. Take the starting tile and place it right in the center of the table, like so. Then place the tiered map tiles orthogonally to the already placed tiles. Next, shuffle and place the treasure deck where players can gain magical items and loot, hero spells divided by yellow spells for buffs and healing, and blue spells for attacks and tricks, villain spells, which, surprise, the villain can only access during the game, and the minion decks, separated by tier, one, two, and three. These beasts will do most of the fighting for the villain. Now the hero character cards begin the game at Shapiro's castle. Anytime the heroes share a tile, they must choose who will be the defender by placing the defender token underneath the mini. Depending on the number of players, spawn a minion on the tile above the center tile by drawing level 1 minions and placing them on the right side of the tile. Set the Mordak card aside for now, since he's the world of eternal and unending darkness slowly gaining power, and we'll get to him shortly. Quick note, by the way, I'm setting up for a four-player game. For games with two or three players, there is slight setup variations. They're simple, though. Check the rulebook for additional details. Finally, grab the handy quick rules guide for each player, locate the loot stash cards according to the number of players in the game, and place the Doom Track for Mordak. The Doom Track will count the number of turns until the final battle begins. Gameplay occurs in rounds, and in this order. Hero Round. Hero Level Up. Villain Round. Minion step, villain level up. Now during the hero round, starting with the hero who holds the initiative token and proceeding clockwise, the hero character will take a turn. The first player does have the option to flip their initiative token to go last in the hero round, and this might be helpful for hero strategy, <laughs> assuming they have one, depending on how the game rolls. Now, during their turn, each character has a number of action points listed on their sheet that they may spend to take actions, and don't worry, we'll go over each one. Move. Now, this action allows a character to spend one action point to move orthogonally up to three times onto already revealed tiles. If the tile is a mountain, it takes up all of their moves. Players cannot leave tiles with enemies on it, and a player may use the move action multiple times in their turn. Now, as you move characters around the map, heroes are placed on the left side of tiles, and minions are placed on the right. The active player will always take the defender token when moving on to a tile with allies, but heroes do have a chance to reorder this during the level up step. This is important because the defender token represents who's going to receive the brunt of attacks. Spell Surge. This action costs one point and allows the character to draw two spell cards in any combination from their allotted spell decks. Scout. This is a free action, costing no action points, and allows a hero to flip map tiles adjacent to their character. Then, according to the symbols on the map tiles, they populate them with cards, including treasures and minions. Now, some tiles have an ambush icon on them as well, meaning that the scouting hero was kind of ambushed. So set those minions aside and resolve the other icons, then the villain gets to spawn the ambushing minions, enacting their actions immediately. Looting is also a free action, allowing the character to take a treasure card on a map tile that contains no enemies. Now these treasures are placed face down in the player's loot stash, to be saved for the level up step. Now let's look at actions that use your power stats. These are typically combat rolls and are known as action rolls, which a character can make once each turn per type. 
by spending an action point. Now in making an action roll, this is when you grab your action dice and roll them. Now the total number of hits that you generate can be used by that player to power an ability. For instance, melee action rolls. Now after generating your hits, the player may target the top enemy on the tile or the defending hero and assign damage. If the enemy on top is defeated, that damage will carry down to the next enemy in the stack. Minions have two health values. First, their total health, which is the amount of damage needed in one attack to defeat them. The second, a wound value, which if made in one attack, will flip them to their wounded side where they are considerably weaker. Heroes will track their health on their health bar, and if they are at zero, they're defeated. Defeated characters will go in the villain's loot stash to be cashed in during their level up step. Ranged attack rolls. Now this works the same as melee, but instead of attacking on their current tile, the players may attack a single adjacent tile. Magic action rolls allows a player to spend their hits to cast spells from their hand. The spell cost in the top right allows a player to spend that many hits in order to resolve the spell. Some spells have multiple options for cost, allowing a player to do a variety of abilities in their spells. Additionally, there are some that are reactionary spells, which can only be cast in response to something during a player's turn. The text on the bottom will describe these triggers. Corruption action rolls allows the villain player to use their hits to summon monsters according to the cost in the top right. Now, the villain will draw minions from the bottom of the minion deck and place them on any revealed map tile that is adjacent to a face-up tile along the map's edge, which means they're basically coming from the wilds. Finally, during any of the action rolls, a player may save their hits and generate plus one tokens. Now for every two hits saved, a player can add a plus one token on a specific power stat. These can be spent in later turns for bonus hits of a roll of that type. And that's the actions, really. After the heroes have all taken their turns, we can move on to the level up step, where the active team does the following. Draw spells, if their abilities allow, discard down to a max of six spell cards, swap defender status on your heroes, if desired, and take treasures from their loot stash. Treasures can be placed in one of three matching slots and provide gain bonuses as well as extra dice. Pass the initiative token if it's the hero's level up, and move the Doom Tracker down one space if it's the villain's level up. Finally, the team's characters can now level up. Now, every remaining treasure and defeated item in the loot stash has a bounty value, which provides them with level up options, like upgrading their action dice, or increasing your actions per turn, or even saving the level up and taking an experience token for later. Discard all of the cashed in cards to the discard pile, and if the hero is cashed in, then they get to respawn in the center tile with full health. Turns continue with the heroes taking a round, leveling up, and then the villain taking a turn, activating minions and leveling up. They activate the minions, by the way, the villain must act with every minion currently on the map in any order of their choosing until each has acted or have passed in their turn. Minions have the same set of actions as the players do, as well as special abilities. Once three shrines have been revealed, the Doom token immediately moves to the end and the final battle begins. If the villain gets to the bottom of the track on his own, the same thing happens, but they're likely pretty powerful at this point. And the final battle, flip over the Doom track and read the instructions out loud. Mordadak will now spawn on the map and the heroes and the villains duke it out to the death. The last team standing wins. And that, my friends, is Valor and Villainy. My name is Ivan Van Orman, and you can watch me and my friends play this game, as well as many others, on Game the Game, right here on Geek and Sundry. Until then, roll dice, play nice, and we'll see you on the internet.